So, as a lot of us have seen, there's been a lot of renewed interest, uh, certainly in Goldeneye. And especially in Goldeneye, one of the first levels most people learn is Dam Agent. Uh, Dam Agent is one of those levels where the record's like extremely tight and has been the record for a very long time. In fact, Brian Bossart achieved this record on September 27th, 2002. Uh, absolutely insane. So the record's actually stood now for over 14 years, uh, going on 15 years. Uh, 90 people now have the record on Dam Agent. 90 people, uh, which is insane. Um, that's a lot of people to be tied uh, for a record. It's the most in Goldeneye history, actually. Um, and recently, actually, just a couple guys got uh, got 53s. Uh, Bismuth is one of them. Uh, Gabrielle Girard and Randy Chapman is another one. Uh, got got Dam. 53. So, more and more people are getting Dan 53. Um, a lot of people saw, of course, uh, Tara Kate and Runner Guy get 54s. Uh, people have been watching Darby and play Damn Agent as well. Um, and so, 53 is becoming increasingly more and more common and will probably become more and more common uh, in the next little while. This, of course, begs the question is Damn 52 possible? And uh, in order to start answering that question, I think we should watch Dan Cervone's. Dam 53, and he was the fourth person to tie this time, um, and it was in 2005, May 2005, when he got it. So we should watch his run and uh, gleam what we can take from it to see if Dam 52 is possible. So Cervone, uh, as we call him, uh, even though it's pronounced Cervone, doesn't get a boost at the beginning, and he goes on and continues through this level. And you'll see him just not get a boost at all this run. And it's important to kind of use it as um, like the goalposts on what's needed for a Dan 53. So obviously the gate is super fast. He gets through there really, really quickly um, and proceeds through the level. But he doesn't get a boost here either. And it's important to note that he uses the control style 1.2. Um, and that's important because we learned stuff about other control styles that saves more time. It's a pretty straightforward run. Um, it's just essentially perfect. Is really all it is, and it's a super fast gate. Jumps off the dam, and when he picks the end screen here, it's going to be dam fifty three. There you go, dam fifty three. Okay, so. Because Goldmine uses full seconds and the in-game timer. The assumption here is that it is as high of a 53 as possible. Let's say 53.97, or 53 and 29 out of 30 frames. And if it was 30 out of 30 frames, then it would be a 54. So assume it's the highest 53 possible, um, one frame short of 54. So the question is, how do we cut 30 frames off of that to make a 52? Uh, and that's a tough question for a lot of people. Um, but we're going to start by looking at another run, and that is the run of Speedrun Trainer. Speedrun Trainer got this time um, fairly recently, and to me, November 2013 is recent. But let's watch Speedrun Trainer's run and try to gleam some other things as well. He's singing along to the run, too, by the way. It's kind of cute. Boost, 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 boost. Singing boost, boost, boost. It's funny. Yeah, the dime tower stops as you jump off the falling ledge. Um, the he got a fast gate, pretty uh, insane. Gate actually. Come on, so you see, he's gotten two boosts now. He got the one at the beginning, and he got one after the gate. So he has two boosts. And this is the run, this is the run. And the thing with getting two boosts is each boost saves roughly a third of a second. So if we assume both of these boosts have saved 0.3 seconds, which is roughly correct, then he's now saved potentially 0.6 seconds that Dan Cervone didn't save on his run. So immediately that takes his 53. Yes! Oh my god! Yes! His mic literally clipped. He was so excited. Um, a really, really funny, cute guy, obviously. But yeah, so if you watch the beginning, he gets a boost here, one boost. 
and he gets another boost um, after the gate, um, right about here. So like I said, assuming uh, the boosts save 0.3, which is generally correct, and you save 0.6 total with the two boosts off of a Cervone 53.97, uh, now it's a 53.37, okay? So we're getting closer. We're getting a lot closer. One thing I have to point out is this gate. And this gate is sort of like the mystery of damn. No one knows how the gate works. Um, and at the speed at which it works. So you press B, and this first gate opens at a random speed. And no one's ever been able to figure out uh, what causes the gate to open fast or slow. Um, the TASers don't even know. But generally it's accepted that the faster you get to the gate, the more slowly it opens. And if you, if you ever experiment and see like you get a bunch of boosts to the gate, like two or three boosts, um, it'll open usually a lot slower than if you get no boosts. And it's not always like that, but generally it is. So making up time in the beginning of the level doesn't matter as much. Um, and that's just because the gate just seems to open slower. And again, we don't, we don't have an explanation for it. No TASer or someone who knows the code of the game really, really well ever uh, understands why. So again, so let's say we take uh, Cervone's run as sort of the mark, uh, 53.97. We subtract two boosts worth, um, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.6 total. We're at 53.37. We're getting very close. The next thing I want to talk about before we get into the next run is the 2.4 control style. So the 2.4 control style, if I just illustrate it here, is really interesting because the way the game's programmed is that anything that happens on the second control style um, takes place during a cutscene of the game. Either a cutscene going into a level or coming out of the level. So in this case, I'm just going to show you uh, the end of Egypt. And what happens is, on the second controller now, since I put 2.4 control cell up, I can shoot the weapon. And during this whole cutscene, since the game's not like used to having two controllers, or the game is like not uh, programmed, or they didn't like fully fix all the stuff, the second controller's inputs are processed during these cutscenes. And obviously, like if you've ever seen anyone play around with this, you can shoot the Baron in the end of Egypt uh, with the golden gun. It's it's fun and cute, right? So you shoot him dead. It's just an illustration of what happens um, with uh, 2.4 control style and the cutscenes. So one thing, one way this benefits on Dam Agent especially, is that if you use 2.4 control style, um, or on other levels as well, if you hold the stick to move, which is what 2.4 control style and 2.2 control style does, you're holding the stick to move during the cutscene. You're not actually moving Bond's position, but the game is taking the input that you're moving Bond in the cutscene, and as a result, you're starting Bond's movement at the beginning of the level with full speed. And that's really important. Um, we use that in a lot of levels now uh, as the games become more optimized. Um, and that's just massive key. In Gold Knight, it takes about 2.3 seconds from when you're standing still to start moving full speed. Um, but because you start at a reasonable speed, um, the whole matter of starting a level at full speed saves roughly 0 0.35 seconds. And that's just what happens. You start right away at full speed, zoom, zoom, you go fast, and uh, you don't have to uh, wait 2.3 seconds to get to full speed. But it saves another 0.35. So again, if we think about Dan Cervone's 53, that we assume is a 53.97, we... Add one boost, which saves 0.3. We add another boost, which saves 0.3. And now we add the starting the level with 2.4 control style, which saves 0.35. We do the math. Now we're left with a 53.02. Okay, that's pretty nuts. That's pretty close to 52. So, the last thing uh, we're going to watch, and the thing with that run is, I don't know, Servone's run could have been better than 53.97. It could have been 53.92. And therefore, that just makes it a 52 with those uh, improvements. 52 has been TAS. We're going to watch the run for... Not because it's relevant, because the leg manipulation is so different um, on TAS. But there's one boost, and we're going to show all the places you can get boosted on the level.
You can get boosted in the tunnel here. That's two boosts now. You can get boosted after the gate as well. And you'll see here the gate is like not as fast. You see how it's stuck on the gate for half a second? Since he was faster to the gate, the gate opened more slowly. But there was another boost there. And then watch carefully here. So he shoots over the tower, which lures the guard off that tower onto the main dam area. And that can boost him again to get a fourth boost. So with our ideal run, uh, Dan Cervoni's pure run, plus 2.4 control style, plus two boosts, plus now one of these additional boosts, that should be enough for Dan 52. So the conclusion we have to make here is that Dan 52 theoretically is possible. There's no reason to suggest Dan 52 isn't possible. Like, that's all there is to it. It becomes a little bit a topic of discussion because, like I said, the double gate, which is like a main key to this level, um, opens at a variable speed. Like, let's say you get two boosts to the gate. That doesn't mean the gate's going to be 0.6 seconds slower at opening always. Sometimes it will, but it doesn't always mean that. So time saved in the start doesn't have as high of an impact as time saved after the gate, but it still matters. Um, no one, uh, Dick, his con, has ever got the fourth boost in a legitimate 53 run, ever. No one's actually done it on console consistently. Um, people have gotten it on random runs, but no one's like gone for 53 and tried to get the boost. So the point is, and the fact of the matter is, all of these signs point to 52 being possible, but no one's done it yet. Generally, when you go for an untied record, like if you guys remember, I went for Street Secret Agent 154 a couple years ago. Um, I knew 154 was possible. I absolutely knew because I knew that if I had a, my best start ever plus my best end ever, it was 154. So I knew absolutely this stuff was possible to happen, and I was willing to play 100 hours to get that time. The, the thing that makes it difficult to reconcile when you're spending a lot of time going for an untied record like Dan52 is there's always this thing nagging in the back of your mind that you're never going to get it. It's not possible. And it's hard to make that jump to say, I know 100% for sure this time is possible. I'm going to absolutely spend 100 hours or 200 hours or 500 hours going for this time until I get it. And it's just extremely difficult, especially when you're not sure if a time is possible, to make that jump. And a lot of times when people have gotten uh, good untied records, it's because they've known uh, for sure that the time they were going for was possible. And because of the way, like, leg is a little bit inconsistent on dam, because of the way the gate is inconsistent, no one's, like, been able to just fully believe 52 is possible. And uh, that, that mental block is so difficult to get around for us. Um, last year, actually, and the year before, Jimbo, who's a longtime leader, brought this uh, concept that no world record had ever been achieved in GoldenEye history on January 21st. It was just like a random day of the year uh, that no one's ever gotten a world record before. So we put up like a bunch of incentives, like a hundred people were putting a hundred bucks, fifty bucks to whoever is the first person at a world record this day. And in 2015, it didn't happen. Everyone tried for hours. No one got any world record. Uh, in 2016, it did happen. Jez got a Streets 112. So he got, uh, you know, he got paid out a couple hundred dollars as an incentive reward from the community to get, a, to get a record. And that was cool stuff. But also on that day, to make things really exciting, people were putting up like $500 or $1,000 if someone got damn 52, just to make things like super intense, uh, to have the potential of like a huge jackpot happening. And Ilu, who's been a long time top 10 player, spent like 17 hours going for damn 52. And he got some really insane 53 runs, uh, but he never got 52. And he hasn't tried too much for 52 cents. It's just so, so difficult um, to reconcile in your brain. I'm going for this time. I believe it's possible. I'm going to spend hundreds of hours going for it uh, to the point where you can actually get it. And that's the biggest challenge. Illu's really the only person who's gone for it really seriously. Um, will we see more people go for it this year? Probably, especially given how common 53 is becoming. 
but for now, all the signs point to 52 being possible, and uh, no one's no one's got it yet. It, it's it's that simple. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this explanation. Is Dan 52 possible? Probably, um, but we'll see if it ends up happening this year. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Uh, maybe it'll be 10 years, and the record will still be 53. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, thanks for watching. Stay true, and uh, talk to you again soon.